Hey everyone, it is Tanya, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another speed build. Today I am building a Victorian-inspired home in the world of Glimmerbrook, which is the world that came with the Sims 4 Realm of Magic game pack, and we're building it in the winter while everything's covered in snow, because while well, the holiday season might be over, at least where I am, we're just getting started on winter. I'm supposed to be getting plenty of snow soon, and there's going to be months and months of plenty of that. So I definitely wanted to continue some of these wintry builds. So this is going to be a snowy Victorian home per a suggestion from one of you. Uh, there was a comment on one of my videos saying that they would really like to see a like snowy Victorian home. So hopefully you like this. I really like how this came out. And actually, this is a build that I kind of worked together with you all on. I built this over on Twitch over the last week. And uh, it was a couple of streams and I really like how it came out. So if you're interested in the future of seeing more long form content, like hours of live gameplay or building, I do stream over on twitch.tv slash three times a week. And I'd love to have you join us. We do things like this. And um, it's just really fun to uh, kind of work together and come up with ideas and build live. So yeah, that is why this might look familiar if you were at the streams. Uh, but anyway, we have the general shape going on here. I'm getting a couple of these like built-in planters out front with some half walls. And I also put a bunch of planter boxes on the windows. And I'm also getting a couple of these roof pieces because I thought it added a lot of extra detail to the exterior. I was having a lot of fun with little details. I ended up doing quite a bit to the roof and uh, it was just fun. I, I feel like I don't build in this style very often and I really didn't want to have that I guess, what well, maybe I guess it would be stereotypical, like, rounded turret in the front of the house. I feel like every Victorian home I've ever built has that. And so I wanted some sort of tower, especially because chat had suggested it. And uh, somebody suggested we do, like, a square one. So that's off on the side. And we're working on some landscaping now. And you can see I used some roof pieces over on the left of the build to add a little bit more detail to that roof piece and I just really like it. There's just like a little bit of a crisscross pattern up there. A lot of Victorian homes have really intricate roof pieces and we can't really replicate that in the game without mods and CC. So I thought at least having a little bit of detail there with the crisscrossing roofs would be nice. But back to the landscaping, getting a ton of evergreen trees, a couple of trees that have lost their leaves as well. I was trying to replicate what I was seeing in the background of this world to try and make this house feel like it fits in. I also end up having a little bit of ivy on the outside. I was struggling with finding pieces that would not change color. I just wanted them to be kind of covered in the snow, not turning brown. So I was just trying to figure that out and I also ended up painting this brick in the end. I think it's so pretty. I was looking at a lot of reference pictures to try and figure out what sort of texture I wanted on the outside of the build and I just loved the brick with that little bit of like uh, scalloped paneling at the roof pieces. Uh, I was really happy with that decision in the end and right now I'm just trying to figure out what fence to use. I ended up using this one from Romantic Garden which I think works out so nicely with the greenery over it and it's just really pretty and structured and I was incredibly happy with how this build came out. Speaking of which, if you like this build and you would like to download it to use for yourself, have your Sims live in, renovate it, whatever you'd like to do, you'll be able to grab this right now on the Sims 4 gallery. You can find it under my EAID, which is Griffy, G-R-Y-P-H-I. You could also find it under the hashtag Miss Griffy, and that information will also be in the description down below as well. Just planning out this little garden bed area and lining it with this debug item that we were discussing in chat. Do you think this is like a sack of flour? Is it a box? I was saying it looks kind of like tofu. I'm not sure what this item is. And uh, next time we have a sim guru in my chat on Twitch, we are going to ask them. But if you happen to know or have any theories of what this item is supposed to be, it's just labeled as debug. There's two colors of them in the debug catalog. I would like to know. <laughs> I'm very curious. Uh, also, if my voice sounds a little bit funny, I have been dealing with allergies quite a bit uh, this season and I keep sneezing, so my uh, voice might sound a little bit stuffed up, so sorry about that. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm just working on landscaping for quite a bit here, trying to make it look pretty lively, even though it's the time of year where it would be dead. I just wanted to make the space look very landscaped and I think it came out pretty cute in the end. I, I really like it. We have a little bit of a pathway here. I wanted something that would be still visible in this area, even in the winter, because primarily I am building in the snow here. You'll see I kind of like pop back and forth between if it's snowy outside or not, because I wanted to make sure the landscaping would still look okay, even if it wasn't like snowy and dead. Uh, so that is why it's changing. And now there is snow again, and I'm inside working on a floor plan, trying to figure that out. It did take a while because at first I ended up laying this out as a five bedroom house, but I cut it down to four bedrooms in the end because it was going to be a five bedroom, two bathroom, I think. And so I instead made it in a four bedroom, three bathroom house, which I think worked a lot better. I have like a primary bedroom that has its own ensuite. And then there are three other bedrooms upstairs and there's a shared hall bath. And then there's one bedroom, not one bedroom, one bathroom downstairs as well. But in the kitchen here, I love how this kitchen came out. It's using a lot from the Vampires pack. The tile and these counters are from there. I really wish these Vampires counters had more swatches. I feel like I mentioned this recently, but they only have three swatches. They have this black and white one. They have one that is a green bottom with a like beige top. And then they have a like dark brown, like reddish brown one with a black top as well. And they're nice swatches, but there's only three of them and I would like more. Uh, and then the vampire tile in this room, it's very busy, but I think it's gorgeous. And so whenever I get the chance to use it and I think it makes sense, I'm really happy about that. And uh, as you might guess, because I tend to do this where I kind of take a color and spread it throughout the rest of a build, since there is a blue accent in that tile, there ends up being quite a bit of blue in this house, which is a color I use a lot of. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you'll be seeing that, but just figuring out what appliances to have in here. I wasn't sure on the fridge. I knew I wanted a little bit of an older style, but I ended up going with this one from Jungle Adventure in the end in the black swatch. And I believe we get a, bra uh, yeah, a black stove as well to have a couple of black appliances in here, which I thought looked nice and blended in with the countertops. And that's mostly it for the kitchen. I think we got a couple more decorations, like coffee pots, some utensils by the stove and... What else do I add in here? Oh, I added a little journal. Like maybe you could write down notes for a recipe you're working on and that kind of thing. But I think it's a pretty simple kitchen, but I love the colors in here. I love the tile and uh, it's kind of cute. <laughs> the rest of the downstairs I think is a little bit warmer in color, but I really like how like pristine the kitchen is. The black and white. I really enjoyed that. Also, I do like these floorboards, but I will be changing them after I complete like this room and I'm working on the entryway because I had built this house over the course of two live streams over two different days. And I had forgotten the first day that I wrote down that I really wanted to use the flooring from Paranormal. So going into the second stream, I was like, oh yeah, that flooring, let me check it out. And the swatches are very different than this deep wood. They have a bunch of wood swatches, but they're not this one. And so I went back and forth and trying to change things around. And I ended up changing the flooring in the whole house to the paranormal flooring because it was just so pretty. Uh, so you'll see that in a little while. But right here, what I'm doing is I'm raising up a TV and like putting it inside this frame so that it blends in a little bit better to this very formal living room. I really liked how that came out. Obviously, it would be blocking a lot of the picture. We're going to pretend it's not actually and all of your television is actually programmed to be that really wide screen format. But uh, I think for the purposes of the game, this worked pretty nicely. And I, I just I really like those televisions in real life that are meant to look like artwork where you can like display different things on a frame. And then when you want to use the TV, it's a TV. And I know, I believe Hey Harry had made a version of those for the game, like some CC, which is so cool. Uh, but I, I would love to have something like that actually in the game as well. That'd be really cool. Anyway, moving on into the dining space over here, I am using a table from Jungle Adventure paired with these chairs from Vampires and a really pretty light that came from the Cottage Living Pack. I think it tied in to the style I had going on down here quite well. And I also painted the walls in here blue and I will be changing the wallpaper in a lot of the rooms a little bit later on as well. But here I am first changing the flooring because do you see this wood flooring? 
Do you see how pretty it is? Do you see the vision? It's just so nice. I had to. Uh, but first, we're decorating the downstairs bathroom. I don't show the upstairs ones on camera because they're different shaped, but they're using the same items. So I have like the same counters and sink and toilet and tub. Uh, I really like the tub I used here, though. It's the vampire's one. I don't use it very often because it is a little bit more old fashioned. It's like a cloffa single tub area. <laughs> with the curtain all the way around it. And I thought it worked beautifully for this house, but I, I don't think it's as versatile as like the shower tub combo that has the curtain from Parenthood. I feel like I get a lot more use out of that one. Uh, but anyway, we are in the entryway now. You can really see that flooring, how beautiful it is. And I'm decorating an entryway table and some paintings going up the steps. I just wanted this space to be welcoming when you first come in and have a couple of decorations, but it's somewhat functional as well because I did add this like record player on here so your sims could listen to some music and I end up adding I think the temperature controls fire alarm there's a coat rack I believe I add a chair in here as well so there's a couple of items in here that you're going to be able to get some use out of but it's just a nice open entryway and I really like that the entrance to this home is on a diagonal I thought that that was a bit of fun when I was working on the floor plan here and uh yeah that's pretty much the entryway what room do we work on next? I think we're going to be working on the art studio, which is right off of the entryway. This is in the bottom floor of that uh, tower that we have on the outside. And I just think this room is super cute. It's tiny. So I was thinking it would either be like an office, a storage room, a bathroom, or an art studio. And it ended up being this really tiny art studio. And I really, really enjoy that. You could definitely renovate it to be whatever you'd like it to be. You can make it a really tiny nursery, maybe. I could imagine that being so cute. Once the baby ages up to toddler or older, though, you're probably going to want to have them have a bigger room. But for a nursery, this would be really cute because we currently don't have much stuff for babies. It would just be a bassinet. So, you know, this room could work. It could work. I still want a nursery kit or stuff pack or get better babies. Thank you. Um, but anyway, we are upstairs now. Working on the hallway, just decorating that as well. I really like this wallpaper I used from the Paranormal pack as well, as well as those paintings. I just used a lot of Paranormal in this build. That was such a good stuff pack, and it was the last one we got before they stopped making stuff packs, and it's been over, it's going to be over a year this month, and that roadmap didn't have a stuff pack. I know everyone's saying that right now, but I'm just kind of upset about it because Paranormal was so good. Anyway, I'm using the Realm of Magic set in this room for the dresser and the bed. I think it's really pretty and I never use it. So I felt like it worked in this house, so I might as well take the plunge and use the gorgeous stained glass bed that is really hard to use because it doesn't fit into a lot of homes, but it's absolutely gorgeous. So that's what I did. And then I am working on the first of the other bedrooms. This one has a purple theme. All of them are a little bit more traditional than the bedrooms I typically do. And they all could be for like a kid or a teenager, I was imagining. Although the last one that I decorate, I was thinking was either a teenager or like a grandparent that lived here or maybe like a guest room. It could be any of those, to be honest. But the first two, this purple one, and then there's like a pinky toned one that I'll be working on after this, I think could be for a kid, a tween, a teen, somewhere in there. But I thought they were fun. I picked the color schemes based on the wallpapers that I found that I thought had a nice trim that matched the flooring. Uh, because I wanted it to look a little bit more traditional and that's not the kind of like kids bedrooms I typically do. So I wanted to be really inspired by the wallpapers. So that is what I did. This room, like I said, is very pink, but it's a different tone of pink than I feel like I've ever used in a bedroom before. It's super toned down and I really enjoy it. This room actually has more of a theme of like butterflies. So you'll see a couple of butterfly paintings that I'm going to be grabbing for the wall over here. I actually end up grabbing the other like set of paintings that I think came with kids room stuff as well uh, in here, which are really cute. And I like the wood tones. We have a stand up mirror in here. I was having a lot of fun with uh, adding a couple of different items. I don't typically put like these fancier mirrors and things. I also thought maybe this kid had like some modular shelving to display some of their toys and stuff. I thought that that would be fun. So we have a piggy bank, some books, and I believe we got some like CDs in the middle part as well as this little toy on the dresser. I really like that toy. I don't know why. I just think it's so cute. Maybe because of the way it's sitting. So it looks more 
relaxed like it's not a super prim and proper thing like the thing we have from base game like the bunny and the giraffe and all of that I like that that toy is a little bit slouched and I would like some more toys and things to put in kids rooms and babies rooms nurseries we're back at it again Uh, But this is that last bedroom I had mentioned. It has a double bed in here, and I could see this as a teenager, a spare bedroom, a grandparent's bedroom. It could really be for anyone, but I think it came out pretty cute in the end, and it's the final room of this house. Just finishing up a couple of finishing touches here before we head on into screenshots. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. That really helps me out. You can also subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and if you click that bell, it'll turn on notifications to be notified of every single time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all soon. Bye everyone.